this book that uh, Roberto Del Oro and I published uh, was really suggested by Paulus Press. They wanted a book on Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation, uh, Amoris Laetitia. I want to give a little background on that. One of the concerns that Pope Francis has had is uh, the family, of course, it's so important in the life of the church. And the family in the broad sense, because one of the wonderful things about this apostolic exhortation is not focusing only on traditional families with a husband and wife and three children and a dog, but he wants to look at all of the various expressions of family life today, people who are living outside of the sacrament of marriage or simply living together, uh, sometimes same-sex couples. All of these people uh, are called to the church in various ways. The church sponsored two synods of bishops. These two synods had a kind of discussion and disagreement uh, that hadn't been seen in the Catholic Church since the Second Vatican Council. That was really very important. You had bishops arguing with each other and going to the press, and cardinals disagreeing and, and uh, trying to say, you know, how does the church reach out to all of these various expressions of family today? And before that, Cardinal Baldessari, who was the uh, cardinal in charge of the synod process, uh, sent out a letter to all the bishops of the world asking them to survey the faithful on these questions of marriage and sexuality and, and dealing with all of these very controverted issues. But for the church, uh, through the bishops, to be asking the faithful what they thought about something to my judgment, was uh, virtually unprecedented. This was consulting the lady, consulting the lady. This is really something new. So that's what they did. And not all of the bishops did it uh, very well. They didn't all, uh, some of them just asked other bishops what they thought. Some put it out to the, uh, their dioceses. Some of the uh, questionnaires were not very well constructed, so people weren't really sure what they were um, asked, being asked. But I think the effort was a very good one. And if you follow the, the process of those two uh, synods, uh, they were quite controversial because of the debate that took place, because they put out a, a preliminary um, summary of what some of the discussions said. Uh, some of the bishops felt, no, that's not really what the synod said. It's much too liberal. We didn't really, we didn't really say that. So there was a great deal of argument on it. So that, that's kind of the background. Two synods on this very difficult issue of uh, um, family life. And a couple of the bishops, Cardinal Lehman of Germany and, uh, and Cardinal Casper, had both a number of years ago, quite a few years ago, suggested that the church needed to find some way to bring Catholics divorced and in second marriages, uh, even if they don't have a, an annulment, uh, to fully participate in the sacraments. And at that time, Cardinal Ratzinger, who was the head of the CDF, immediately said, no, we can't do that. It's against Catholic teaching, against Catholic discipline. But that same question came up again this time. And again, uh, there were people uh, pushing how we can reconcile these people, perhaps under some circumstances, uh, find some way to involve them in the sacramental life of the church. When Francis uh, wrote his apostolic exhortation, which is his official response to the synod, uh, it immediately was very controversial because of some of the things he said. Uh, and uh, Paulus Press said, this is a very serious issue in the life of the church. We need a book. We need to look at all of the different issues involved. What does the canon law have to say about this? How do we understand the family today? Uh, what does the pope actually say in this encyclical? Uh, how, how was it received by the bishops of the church? Uh, and so you can see I'm kind of outlining the various chapters. Well, Dr. Deloro and I sat down together and said, what are the questions we should address in this book? Uh, and who are some of the theologians that we would like to consult and have contribute uh, to, these, uh, to this pastoral and theological reflection on this very important apostolic exhortation. So that's, that's kind of how we got at it. And we began naming people that we'd like to say. Yeah, we said uh, John Coleman is a distinguished sociologist who's, who's now retired from his academic position, but still writing and teaching and living in a parish. He's dealing with these things uh, frequently. We had a couple of recommendations from, from the press on authors that might be good. Uh, I thought the issue of the domestic church was an important one, so I contributed a chapter on that. Uh, very ancient notion that the family itself can, uh, constitutes a, uh, an ecclesiola or a domestic church. That goes back to about the second century, uh, which I was not aware of until I started doing some research on it. So it's, uh, and Francis uses that term uh, in the uh, uh, Apostolic Exhortation, and so did the Second Vatican Council that kind of reclaimed that uh, image of the domestic church. 
So as we talked about it, we, we tried to put together a, a, a collection of scholars that could address all of these issues in, in a credible book uh, that would help parishes and uh, pastors and individuals to look at all the, the, the pastoral and theological issues involved in ministering to families today. There was a considerable pushback from four cardinals who authored uh, a letter to the Pope uh, which was called a dubia, uh, doubts, certain doubts about the meaning of this, and, and uh, they made the accusation that this was really to change Catholic doctrine, uh, which the Pope, of course, can't do all by himself. That's, that's sort of a misunderstanding, uh, I think. But when the Pope didn't respond in the way they wanted, then they made this letter public, uh, and they had some other bishops join them. So I think this was the beginning of some of the pushback that uh, Pope Francis is experiencing from some more conservative members of uh, the Curia, and we're experiencing this right now uh, in regards to uh, Cardinal Dagano's letter, which of course is fairly well known, and the fact that there are a number of bishops that are clearly not happy with uh, the directions of Pope Francis's pontificate. So uh, that's an issue in the life of the church today, and uh, it's to me, to my way of thinking, it's regrettable we have a pope who felt that he had a mandate to renew the Curia from the time of his uh, election. There were certainly a number of problems uh, under Pope Benedict, uh, which Pope Benedict finally realized he wasn't really uh, able to deal with, partly because of age and partly because he's, he's not really an administrator, he's a theologian. And uh, th th this has continued, uh, this um, sort of pushback, uh, I call it, to uh, um, the direction of Pope Francis's pontificate. And again, it's a sign of a kind of healthy difference of opinion within the church as we struggle to deal with some of these issues. Um, it's, it's too bad because for some people, it's, some people find this very scandalous, you know, that the church is not speaking with a single voice, but it's much more realistic. You know, the church is a real human organization as well as you know, God's holy people, as Francis likes to call it. Uh, and to have this kind of disagreement uh, is, uh, to my way of thinking, really a healthy sign. Certainly, Pope Francis, from the beginning of his pontificate, has talked about that principle of St. Ignatius of Loyola, of thinking with the church. Uh, most people translate thinking with the church into thinking with the hierarchy. And Pope Francis is very clear that thinking with the church means thinking with the whole church, with what he calls the holy people of God. Uh, and therefore, uh, we, we need to find ways to realistically assess where they're at on these things. And this is not a question of taking a poll or a survey or something like that, but we, uh, we have to find out you know, where the laity really are because the Holy Spirit's working in the whole church, not working just in the hierarchy. That's, of course, the basic principle here. Uh, under uh, the International Theological Commission, under Francis's pontificate, put out a very important uh, instruction called the census fidei in the life of the church, the census fidei or sense of the faithful, uh, is a fundamental doctrine that's pretty much been overlooked in the, in the practical life of the church. And in that document, the International Theological Commission echoes Francis, really, in some of them. It says, it, it says that uh, the laity are involved in the formation of the church's uh, teaching uh, or doctrine, uh, and even in the de development of its moral teaching. Uh, which, is, which is quite important, so that they have a real role to play. And Francis himself, uh, especially in that uh, fine interview he did with Father Antonio Spadaro, uh, talked about the, the people of God as a subject. You know, the people of God are not just uh, sort of, you know, the, the faithful to be shepherded by their uh, pastors, but they are a real uh, subject. Uh, who play an active role in the life of the church. And one of the things it uh, says very specifically in that uh, census fide in the life of the church is we have this kind of traditional distinction between the church teaching and the church taught, the ecclesia uh, discens and the ecclesia docens. And uh, the document says that kind of reduces the laity uh, to um, people who are simply taught by authority. And that's not right. The church is an organic process in which the Holy Spirit is working in all the members, uh, headed members, you know, bishops, 
uh, pastors uh, and the faithful themselves. And therefore, in, in uh, reaching some of these very difficult decisions in the life of the church, we have to find means, this document says, of, of really assessing what the laity think on some of these questions. I think what I would take away from this process is a, a respect for the, all of the different voices in the life of the church. When I think of our contributors, it's, it's really a fine group of scholars. Uh, some of them are, are pastoral people, some of them are canonists, some of them are theologians. Uh, so it's a very diverse group, uh, but they all have something to say and something to contribute. And uh, I think that the church works best when we recognize the, the rich diversity of gifts of the Spirit that we have. We have theologians and pastors and, and pastoral agents and, and uh, people who work in parishes and, and scholars who, you know, and sociologists. All of this is, is really important. And that was one of the things that, that really impressed me in uh, uh, working together with Roberto in developing this text was to say, boy, we have some wonderful folks out there that can help us in addressing some of these questions.